Hello everyone, my name is Dakota and welcome back. Today we're taking a look at Factory Town. This game's been out for a little while and I have I just got it a few weeks ago and I love it. It's a great little factory and logistics puzzler. Very much in the vein of Factorio or Satisfactory or Dyson Sphere program, but uh, got a, with a really you know different feel and aesthetic to it and, and I've been really been enjoying it. And we're going to do a series and we're going to go through the campaign of this game and you can see I'm a few levels in I've I've pretty well finished level four as well and I'm going to do an episode over each one so today we're going to start with level one and this is going to be a tutorial series merged with a let's play where we go through and solve this as well as talking about what we're doing now there is a tutorial built into the game so I recommend following that that's actually what the first campaign mission is we're going to turn off the tutorial and go through it, it looks like I've already got that that turned off uh and and then we're going to go ahead and knock out this challenge now, there are a few things on the screen, and Factory Town does have a little bit of a learning curve, so let's go through what we're looking at here and then get started with the gameplay. In the top left corner, you can see a number of resources. The important ones here are our coin counts, as well as our houses and our workers. Below that, we just have a uh, sort of inventory where we can keep track of different things, and then below that, we have some objectives. Now, there are three panels here. The first one is how we advance in tech level. This unlocks uh, new structures and other things to build. The second one is population. This lets us get more workers. And the third one is our victory conditions or how we complete the map. Down on the bottom left, you have our panel. This is all of our options. Uh, and so we can, for example, go into our research panel here and see that once we unlock tech level two by crafting 20 planks, then that will give us the ability to research all of these different technologies, for example. Uh, and you can, you can do all the rest there. And then you have a quick access to a bar at the bottom. Now, when you select an item, you can see information about that in the top right, and then you can see actions about that item in the bottom right. So, for example, if we select a worker, we can see the name of that worker, what they're doing, what their task list is, uh, and then we have the option of deleting that worker if we choose to. Now, to give a command, you select a worker, you right-click on something, and then click on a destination, and that will give them the issue. So we just ordered this guy to uh, harvest wood from a tree and then drop it off at the town center. We're going to have... Uh, Another worker harvest stone and drop it off at the town center. Another one doing wood. And then we are going to have another worker over here gather up food and take it to houses. Now, taking food to houses is how we expand our town, which gives us access to more houses, more structures, more workers. Um, and one thing that you'll notice is that my workers are having to run quite a long way in order to provide for all of these houses. They have to run all the way over here to the other house. So we're gonna go ahead and start even before we build any new structures by restructuring our current world in order to make it a little bit more efficient, a little bit more palatable. So we're gonna take this house over here, and press M to use the move tool, click on that and drop it right along uh, our other houses. Now, when I did that, I picked it up with M and then I pressed R to rotate it. We need to make sure it's facing into a roadway and that will allow our workers over here to be much more efficient in supplying wood there. Now we're building up a stockpile of wood and stone and that's gonna let us build some buildings. If we press B, we can pull up the building list. And you can see we can choose to construct buildings. This is also how we add workers, uh, add more roads, things like that. But we're gonna start by building a lumber mill. So let's go ahead and drop down a lumber mill uh, somewhere over here near our trees and then when we place a building that can be used for processing, a recipe icon will pop up. If we click on that, we can choose what we want to craft. We're gonna go ahead and craft both planks and paper here. We won't be able to do paper for a while because that requires water, uh, but we can do planks as soon as we get some wood. They also require work units. This is actually provided by the structure itself. It determines sort of how fast it goes. Let's go ahead and drop down a couple more workers, and these guys will take wood from the nearby forest and drop it off at the lumber mill. Now, as they arrive, you'll see that wood appear in the input section there, and you'll see the planks process start to make. You'll also see planks appearing in the output. So we're gonna need another worker to take the planks from our lumber mill and drop it off at our uh, central area, or at our, our town center. Now the town center is an important building. This is a central storage area that if you want to build with a material, it has to be stored in the town center. You can have multiple town centers. Um, and you'll also notice there's a ring around that town center. That ring is uh, sort of considered to be the town. It's where any houses you want to build in that town have to go. Uh, beyond that, it's it's more just a good guideline for 
uh, what the town should be. Now we're almost to our next level of research. We're at six of eight happiness. We're providing one crop to each house. Let's go ahead and add in a third crop here. Uh, we can add apples from these apple trees and that should give us the ability to increase our population level. We can already increase our tech level and you can see that's unlocked a number of new research researches. It's also given us three new building, the food market, the school and the general store. Now the food market, the school and the general store are important because they provide things to nearby houses. So for example, we can take these houses now and let's move one of these out of the way a little bit. Actually, let's move this one out of the way. We'll put our food market down in that lower corner. Let's go ahead and grab a food market and construct it there. And now we can instruct our workers to gather their food and take it to the food market. And since that food market is centrally located, um, they have a shorter run and it's always the same run. Now a food market will automatically distribute any food that it's given to any nearby houses that are connected by roads. That's why it's important to have our buildings facing into roads. And so what we can do now is move these houses and make sure, making sure they're connected to roads, but they no longer need to be uh, so centrally located to our farms. This means we can expand our farming operation and have a neighborhood off to the side where the food can come from. Now, in order to accommodate that, I'm going to expand our, uh, our footpath just a little bit, and we're going to build a neighborhood down here. Now, a house is three units wide, so we're gonna count down one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we are going to build a uh, road out from there. All right, we built up a little bit of a platform here and placed our houses. We can go ahead and add another house there and that will allow us to expand our population level even further as well as recruit more workers. By expanding our population level, each house can take on more uh, capacity, which means we can add yet more workers to our town and expand even further. Now we also unlocked with that technology a schoolhouse and a schoolhouse is one of the most important things for us to build because it is how we do research. And it looks like the schoolhouse is going to take some planks and we only have 14 planks. Uh, so let's go ahead and assign another worker to uh, just haul those planks. See, I think we're actually producing plenty of planks. But yeah, we've got a full, full output there. Um, we're backlogged by our ability to deliver them to the town center and we should get to 24 in no time at all. And we can place a schoolhouse. Now I'm placing this quite near to the lumber mill, but you'll notice that the schoolhouse has a circle around it as well. It's this green circle. And it, like the marketplace, will deliver any uh, of its final products to houses connected by roads within that circle. So this means we have to sort of manage how far uh, our materials have to go to reach our schoolhouse, but we also want that schoolhouse to be close enough to the houses to supply them. And so we can do that right there for now. I think we're gonna move that a little closer later on because we're gonna be expanding our, our production, but we can always move buildings, so that's no problem for us. The other thing we're gonna do here is move our well from the town center over to uh, being near our schoolhouse, or over to be near our lumber mill because the uh, paper, remember, requires both wood and water. So now we can add another worker and pick up water and drop it off at the lumber mill. That will allow the lumber mill to make paper. And so then we can add a worker and pick up paper and drop it off at the schoolhouse. And there we go. Now each time the schoolhouse receives paper, it will add a uh, research point to our total by delivering it to a nearby house. And if we press the R key, we can op open up our research panel and see that we can uh, do research into grain processing, civics, masonry, woodworking, and so on. So we're gonna let this run for just a little bit and get some more research points built up, as well as a nice stockpile of wood and planks, and then we will come back in to do some of that research. All right, it's just been about 30 seconds and you can see we're up to 14 research points. One thing you'll notice is that we are getting plenty of inputs on our lumber mill, uh, but our people are sitting around waiting because they can't get the items fast enough and our uh, wood delivery people are actually sitting around waiting because they can't unload their items fast enough. So what we can do here is we can add more workers to our lumber mill to increase processing speed. So if we increase, excuse me, with one worker, we're producing 1.1 work units per second. If we increase this to three, we'll be producing 2.3. So we'll be producing about twice as fast 
and this will make sure that we eliminate that backlog. Now we are consuming our worker capacity quite a bit. We're at 15 workers used of 17. So it may be time for us to add some more houses. So I'm gonna add our road out here a little ways, and then I'm going to add some more houses along that road. Those houses will increase our worker capacity a great deal as they start to receive uh, food and books then they will also level up like these other houses have. You can see that these houses have sort of thatched roof while these ones have a tile roof. That's simply an indication of the level. So this is a level two house, uh, which means it provides, um, let's see, I think it provides two, uh, sorry, four workers, um, whereas the level one house will provide just the one worker. All right, now I went ahead and placed down a general store in the center of our town. General store works very similar to the food market, except it works with industrial goods. If we take that, you can see it takes planks, stone bricks, wood wheels, cotton, and cloth. We are delivering currently planks from our town center to our supermarket. Remember, our town center is a central storage area. It's where we can gather materials for use in construction, but workers can take items from there as well as depositing them in. So we're taking some planks there and selling them at our general store. This is eating up our supply of planks a fair bit, but we're gonna be increasing that real soon. And we need the red coins from the general store in order to unlock more advanced research. And it looks like we have just enough now. So let's go into our research tab and see what we can get. Looks like we have unlocked the chute, which is a great structure for us. The chute is going to allow us to eliminate a lot of these uh, workers running around back and forth. What a chute does is allows materials to travel either downhill or across flat terrain. So we can take a chute here and place it just like so. And now our worker gathering stone can simply gather the stone and deliver it to the top end of the chute and it will automatically go down the hill. By removing the need for the worker to run down to the town center every time, we can greatly expand the amount of materials they're gathering. All right, with these two workers delivering wood to the chute, uh, they can now gather much more efficiently and we can do the same thing over here. Now this won't gain, make us huge gains at this time because of how close we built the uh, the lumber mill to our forest, but it'll help a little bit and every little bit is something. Now shoots can't be used for finished products, so we can't replace the workers who are hauling items from uh, you know, the planks over to the town center or the paper to the mill, for example, uh, that's going to require a conveyor belt, but we should have the research in order to do that. The basic logistics allow us to pull items out of buildings. Uh, unfortunately, processed items don't work on shoots, so we need the conveyor belt in order to do that, but we can unlock that right now. Now the conveyor belt is going to allow us to uh, remove some of these workers by replacing them. And so let's go ahead and grab this worker here and then delete him because he is in the way. And let's go ahead and place down a new conveyor belt. So this, the conveyor belts and chutes are located under the paths menu in our build menu. Let's go ahead and place a conveyor belt there. And it looks like we don't actually have any conveyor belts. So let's go ahead and put that worker back uh, just for now until we get some conveyor belt construction set up. Now the conveyor belt is made at a workshop. So let's go ahead and set up a workshop here. So, and if we look at this, we can see that's gonna require some wood as well as some planks. So we're gonna go ahead and set that up and we're going to set up a second lumber mill here in order to make the planks for this. And then what we can do is have a couple of workers. One will gather wood and deliver that to the lumber mill. The other one will gather wood and deliver that to the workshop. And then we will take one worker temporarily and have them pick up the planks and deliver that to the lumber mill or to the workshop. And then one worker to pick up the conveyor belts and drop them at the town center. And now that we have our first conveyor belt, we can actually uh, eliminate one of these workers. We can go ahead and take this guy and select the worker and delete him and we can now replace him with a wooden conveyor belt like so and you can see that that 
uh, it, it's sort of smart. It naturally places a grabber with it and selects a material if there's only one material to choose. So now the planks that this lumber mill is producing will naturally flow into our workshop. We're also going to go ahead and add our wooden conveyor belts to our inventory there so we can keep track of how many we have. Since we have another one, we can go ahead and eliminate this worker who we had set to uh, deliver the paper from our lumber mill to our school, and we can replace that with another conveyor belt. So let's go ahead and place a conveyor belt there. Now, because this works, or because this lumber mill is producing two objects, two different outputs, uh, the grabber doesn't know what to pick up. So we can go ahead and uh, choose that we want to haul paper and that we want to deliver that to our lumber mill or to our schoolhouse rather. Now by replacing those two workers with conveyor belts, we've actually reclaimed them. So we can, uh, for example, increase the worker count at our lumber mill a little bit more if we wanted to do that. Um, and this allows us to be more efficient. We could also expand with more production structures in the same place. Now our logistic tools, our chutes, and our conveyors also work for farm goods. So let's go ahead and change this to deliver potatoes and apples to a chute instead of to a instead of to the market directly. And we will also have our grain be delivered to a chute. Now one of the problems with this game is the angling of logistics. If we want to uh, if, if we have two buildings built out of caddy corner, we need to have an L-shaped connection there. You can't do a sort of diagonal on a single square uh, connection there. So we can go ahead and delete this worker since we have six conveyor belts. We can go ahead and delete him and replace him with, place him with some conveyor belts here. We'll do that like so. And now our grain is naturally being delivered as well. And just like that, we are being much, much more efficient. All right, and with that automation out of the way, let's take a look at what else we can do in the research area. We can also re-evaluate based on our goals and objectives. In order to have victory, we need to produce 20 wooden conveyor belts. We're well on the way for that. We also need to make some bread and have a kitchen structure as well as reach tech level three. Tech level three requires stone bricks and wooden wheels. Let's go, let's go ahead and place down a workshop and see what wooden wheels take. Wooden wheels take planks as well. So let's go ahead and set up another production chain for wooden wheels. We'll go ahead and build this production chain down here on the other side of the river to take advantage of the forest down here. And we're going to need a lumber mill down here as well. We want one gap between these so that we can place a conveyor belt between them. Let's go ahead and place that. And so that conveyor belt is going to all the planks from the lumber mill and deliver them to the workshop producing wooden wheels. Let's go ahead and make a chute that feeds into our lumber mill, place down a couple of workers here, deliver wood to our chute, and then we'll also need a worker, take our wooden wheels and deliver them. We'll deliver these directly to our uh, general store. Now, because the wooden wheels will provide the remainder of the red coins we need, we don't need to have this worker delivering planks anymore. So we can go ahead and just select that worker and delete them for now. If we want to reassign them to something else later, we can always make a new work. Now, with those wood wheels under production, we are well on our way to tech level three. Our next objective is to get some stone bricks there, and that's going to require the masonry research. So let's go ahead and unlock that. Uh, and since we have the materials, we have plenty of research points as well as gold, we can go ahead and unlock civics as well. This allows us to build a second town center as well as expand our houses. So if we wanted to, uh, for example, have a second town over here that did some advanced processing, we could do that. Um, it is worth noting that town centers do share materials between them. So we can, for example, have a uh, uh, area over here that makes a bunch of planks and conveyor belts and chutes and things. and. Uh, then use those back here in our original town. But for right now, we want to make some bricks. So we're going to lay down a stonemason. And instead of delivering our stone to the town center, we're going to deliver it to the stonemason directly. We'll go ahead and 
instruct our worker to deliver deliver directly to the chute. Looks like we had a little bit of a logistics problem there. Go ahead and try this again. There we go. And so once it receives three stone, it'll produce three stone bricks. Now stone bricks are used in construction, so we want to stockpile those. So we'll drop that off at the town center. All right, and with that out of the way, uh, you know, there are a couple of things we could do. We could, for example, expand our roads and add some more houses here. Uh, let's go ahead and do that just for... Now, if we want to expand our happiness level, we can expand how we're delivering goods to houses. If we take a look at the house, uh, we can see that receiving items both from food as well as from the market does expand happiness. So one of the things we could do is set up a special lumber mill over here, for example, that has a chute leading up to it from this forest. Then set up a couple of workers here. We gather wood over the chute. This will make planks. And then we have 20 conveyor belts. That should be plenty for us to uh, connect this up to our general store there. And so this will automatically increase the happiness of our town even further as those planks get sold at our general store. It'll also give us a bunch more red coins. Now, one of the things you'll notice as I've laid out this town is that I've tried to organize things into district. We have a main industrial area over here, we have our neighborhood, and then we have our farming area. You'll also notice that the town center, I've sort of made all the automated connections into the town center on one side and left a clear path that allows workers to get through there if needed. We could also raise these up if we wanted to do that. Go ahead and upgrade our town center again. Um, and we can see that we have unlocked now tech level three, which gives us the kitchen and fluid pipe research as well as population level four. So that is great. Let's take a look at that research. So the kitchen is gonna take 200 books and the fluid pipe is going to take 50 books as well as some red coin. Let's go ahead and grab the fluid pipe there. Uh, this is a new structure that we will need to craft and deliver in order to build, uh, but it will allow us to automate the production of water. All right, it looks like the fluid pipe is actually made at a lumber mill. So let's go ahead and set up another lumber mill here. And this time we are going to have another chute that feeds into this thing right there. Set up a worker. Pick up. And we don't need a ton of fluid pipes, so I think one worker gathering wood should be plenty. And then we can use a conveyor belt to deliver this to the town center. And we'll simply be making fluid pipes there. Now, fluid pipes will allow us to eliminate our uh, water carrier here, this person who's hauling water from the well directly into our lumber mill. Uh, now that we have some fluid pipes, and let's go ahead and add that to our uh, inventory there so we can keep track of it. Now that we have some fluid pipes, we can go ahead and delete this worker. Now to place pipes, you want to go into your horizontal layer. This is where you can see all your water producing structures and things that require them. Uh, and so let's go ahead and grab some pipes here and connect from our well into our mill here. And so now our mill will automatically be supplied with water. Now it turns out that houses also really like water. So let's go ahead and place down another well, but let's place this one near the water uh, river. If you, if you go to place a well, you'll see that there are some tiles that appear blue. These ones will naturally supply a huge amount of water, uh, almost an infinite amount. So you can see this is, this is quite full. Let's go ahead and place down some pipes and go into our code here. And let's run these pipes under our streets so that they can connect to all of our different houses. We don't quite have enough pipes there. It also looks like we made a small mistake with houses there, so let's put these guys 
back on the roads uh, and that will allow that house to receive a bunch of goods and and grow up as well all right so we've gotten a few more pipes let's go ahead and connect up a couple of houses now so and you can see those houses are now generating a bunch of gold coins because it turns out that if we look at this water will actually generate gold coins experience and happiness as well and one well should be able to provide for many many houses if we can set up a decent pipe network that will uh, we're going to build up a stockpile of pipes before we expand to that further uh, but it looks like we have enough research for us to do our last research into the kitchen this gives us the kitchen and the tavern now the kitchen is another processing building this takes uh food items and process them, them into more advanced food items. In this case, we're gonna be producing bread from our grain. Uh, and then the tavern is how you can sell and distribute those. Now our objective doesn't say anything about actually building a tavern. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with a kitchen and then uh, if we have space for it, we'll go ahead and set up a tavern as well. Now in order to do this, we're going to have to uh, stop selling our grain at the market. And we're also going to delete uh, the structures that we have over here. So we're going to go ahead and remove those workers for now. Just move them to the back. And let's go ahead and move our food mill uh, a little closer to our grain. And then place down a kitchen. Kitchen. Next to it. And we can eliminate some of this fencing. And that is where we will put in our tavern. So we're going to be making some bread from grain. You'll also notice that the kitchen requires fuel. This is the first structure that requires fuel. Fuel can come from either wood or coal. So we're gonna have to have someone who supplies fuel into this kitchen. So let's go ahead and run a chute from over here at the forest up to the kitchen, place a worker there to gather wood and deliver it there. And that will go in as fuel for the kitchen. So when we see that wood arrive, we can see we get a bit of fuel. Our grain harvesters can deliver to our mill and we can uh, set up some conveyors now. Like so, and then we can also build our tavern here on the street, like so, and set up conveyors to deliver our bread to our tavern. All right, I misspoke. It looks like the, uh, the bread goes to the food market and not the tavern. We don't have, we aren't producing any food at this time that actually goes to the tavern. So let's go ahead and just redirect our conveyor over to the tavern there and uh, we should start to see that uh, flow into our houses and our people get quite happy. Yeah, we're getting 12, 12 gold coins and happiness whenever bread arrives at a house. Our houses are leveling up like crazy, uh, so the bread is definitely a winner. You'll also notice that our town center has the ability to have a specialization assigned. Specializations give the opportunity for uh, bonuses to happen. So in the case of a commerce specialization, which is the only one we have unlocked, our food market, our general store, and our tavern all have the ability to double their output on occasion. It's a, it's a random chance thing. But now any items that are delivered by our, our tavern, our food market, or our general store can be worth double points when it's delivered. And there are other specializations that allow you to get more out of your raw materials or more out of processing or things like that. All right, and that is just about gonna do it. Uh, you know, obviously there are places we could increase our efficiency a little more. We could add some chutes to uh, to our conveyor belt construction line, uh, but this is the basics of Factory Town. And one of the things that I really recommend whenever you start a new game of Factory Town is getting some of these basic production lines set up, things like conveyor belt, uh, and planks and stone bricks because those are going to go a long way to making sure that you don't have any bottlenecks when you're going to build new things later on. We really want to automate those early on. And with our last pieces of bread uh, coming down the conveyor belt right now, uh, we are just about done with this map and we will uh, call it there for today and I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, look at Factory Town. Leave a like if you have and subscribe if you'd like to see more. My name is Dakoba and I hope you have an efficient day. I'll see you soon.